Hey, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording, and today I'm here to talk to you about the four producers, one sample challenge that Andrew Huang uh, spearheaded and brought some of us into to do this thing for you. And it's really cool, and I did a thing for it, and I'm gonna tell you about it. So here we go. Okay, so Cuckoo came up with a uh, really, really great sample source in the form of this song. The challenge was to basically just sample it and make something out of it. Everyone decided that we weren't going to get stems or individual pieces of it. We were just going to sample from the song itself and see what we could do. Sort of like an old school hip hop pull it off vinyl thing. And that's the challenge. So what, what did I do? Well, it's this. Okay, so how did I do it? Well, whenever I'm faced with like sampling from an entire track, the first thing I do is go through and listen to little sections that I might be able to pull out from various things. So like little pieces of vocals, little pieces of drums. And so that's what I did. I started and I pulled little pieces out, like little pieces of vocals and percussion. Some of the vocals turned into this, and this little vocal sample turned into this. Some of the miscellaneous percussion and like pieces of drums and stuff like that turned into this kit. So there's a big section, like kind of a bridge section in the song. It really struck me that it would make a really good build. So I grabbed it and rearranged it to fit a 4-4 time signature because the original song was not in 4-4 and the track I'm making is in 4-4. So I had to add a little bit of extra looping at the end. So I did that and I added some uh, auto filter automation and some volume automation to level out the volume. And this became the basis of the track. The track is divided into two sections. It's kind of like a sandwich of itself, sort of, I guess. There's a build, there's a drop, there's a bridge section that's also kind of the outro, and then another build, another drop, and then sort of a bridge going into the outro. I'd been listening to a lot of sort of like future bass and neo soul stuff, and I knew I kind of wanted to do something in that vein. So with that in mind, I started building a track around that genre, or at least what I think that genre sounds like. So there's this little bit at the end of the build that I thought was really, really cool and could make a nice chord progression -y sound. So I did some auto filtering and repitching, and that kind of became the basis for the chord progression of the drop section. Uh, in the genres that I've been listening to, the drop usually has like some really, really big chords, like just these massive chords. And I wanted to emulate that, so I went and started grouping stuff up in Ableton to get a really big layered sound. A couple instances of analog, sawtooth, and squares, heavily panned, and uh, a couple other things that sound like this. And then after I heard it, it wasn't quite what I was looking for, so I messed around with some auto filtering and compression and stuff like that and ended up with this. So after the first phase of the drop, I wanted to keep things kind of similar in terms of like what was happening, but I also wanted to keep the listener interested and change things up just a little bit. So I used the same chord progression that I had for the original drop chords and replaced the instrumentation. I did that with a few stacks of free Ableton racks from a company called Cymatics. They have a bunch of free resources on their website. So there's sort of a chill kind of chord thing. And then there's these two synth breath sounds that are pan left and right. Later in the song, when we get back to this section, I used a straight up hyper saw, super saw patch from Serum. The main drums are a combination of one shots and loops from Cymatics free drum packs. I arranged the drums so that the downbeat of each measure was really uncluttered and had space, and then everything picked up in the second beat. Which gives the downbeat an incredible amount of power and kind of makes the track a little bit more fun to dance to. It's a little bit more interested than keeping everything like static for the entire time. I wanted another little section to go into before I went back to the build to sort of repeat the song. And for this section, I took little vocal snippets from the song and repitch them up and down and chop them up. Take control, 
I use that same synth brass thing from before with auto filtering on it to give it a little bit more mellow sound. I also took a tiny vocal snippet from the song and turned it into a pad by bringing it into Simpler and looping it and warping it. So I recorded that line and froze it into audio because I wanted to mess with the pitches a little bit more. Once I got it into audio, I did some pitch automation. There's also a really chill pad in this section courtesy of Serum. And a sub bass also courtesy of Serum. Oh yeah, then there's this thing. which is an Ableton preset that has the ability to really freak out with the right kind of automation. So when I introduced the second build, I introduced this cool buzzy lead sound. And it kind of riffs itself into the build and into the drop. It plays around with the chords as sort of a counterpoint melody. I also added some little vocal snippets here. Hey. Hey and dropped out the beat because I wanted to give the listener a little bit more variation that didn't include building things up too much. In the second half of the second drop section, I introduced that hypersaw sound and a gnarly bass sound from Serum that really drives home the melodic progression of this part. That bass takes us into the like penultimate section before the outro. It includes this really cool Serum synth guitar arpeggio thing. Filtered chords. And that weird Ableton thing again. And then right before the outro, I introduced this little turn that takes us off of a rigid 8 to 16 bar uh, measure thing to give the listener a little bit of rest before we go into the outro and soften the whole vibe down because the outro is a lot softer than the rest of the track. So this little turn kind of just like catches your ear but also gives you a breather. And then we go into the outro, which is super, super mellow. So that's pretty much it. After I got the initial arrangement done, and I spent a day like stripping a bunch of stuff back from it and trying to make it as sleek as possible because I have a tendency to over layer and make things way too big. So I wanted to try to take it back to something that was a little bit more chill. That usually takes longer than putting the track together in the first place. So that's it. Thank you so much to Andrew for making this thing happen. Thanks to uh, Cuckoo and Rachel for making awesome stuff too. And thanks to Lucy for this amazing song that we've been able to chop apart and uh, hopefully do something cool with. Thanks, my name is Jeremy, this is Red Means Recording, and I hope you're having a wonderful day.